which you can what you can see here is the spacenear.us slash tracker website which allows you to via watch uh, high altitude balloons which use the UK tracking system on the flight and the um, associated parameters with the flight. The UK tracking system basically is consisting of a NTX2 transmitter on the balloon which transmits with 434075 MHz or um, a different version has 434.065 MHz and these signals can be picked up by a receiver which is capable of receiving in the 70 cm band on SSB so everyone who has such a receiver can listen into the balloon and if um, a signal is received the following happens um, it is required to connect the receiver to the line in of the PC um, and the sound card will then receive the uh, radio teletype messages from the balloon and um, you need another program called DLFLDG which can then uh, decode the telemetry strings from the balloon um, and this program DLFLDG then uploads the data to the spacenear.us website which you can see here um, I want to give you a little tour of what you can see here today we had the launch of HABE1 and the main element of the website is the map in the middle um, <coughs> which is basically Google Maps and which shows uh, several things um, the red line obviously is the flight trajectory uh, the radio towers are receiving stations if I zoom out you can see the respective stations and you see now the green lines connecting uh, the flight path with the radio towers and that is indicating uh, which stations are receiving the balloon if I zoom in again you see this is a very interesting flight it uh, started here and moved to the southeast turned around to the north northwest west crossed uh, the path uh, where it came from here it was still climbing then it uh, the balloon burst and um, it descended and uh, as you can see the distance between launch and landing is not so great because it um, really um, came back to the launch point if I zoom in you notice this uh, dark red line and this light red line and the red, light red line is uh, a prediction based on high altitude wind predictions um, and this updates automatically when the balloon is in flight so um, earlier on the landing point was uh, predicted to be the landing point was predicted to be around here so very close to the launch site but then um, the balloon climbed higher than expected and uh, thus um, this, in, in, um, this did not happen uh, and instead the balloon came down here As you can see, I can switch um, the map mode, the satellite mode, and the terrain mode, like, just like on Google Maps, as I said before. Um, when I click any point on the map, you see this um, flag comes out, which shows the time when these uh, when th this point in flight happened, 
and in this case the position, the attitudes and the stations which receive the balloon. Um, in other flights there can be more information being transmitted but this depends on the on the system of really how the balloon system is set up um, and this uh, then could include pressure and uh, temperature levels and so on and the same information as on the flag is shown on the right here um, as you can see the position the current altitude um, you see the balloon has landed by now of course but uh, you see it at 1.5 kilometers this is um, because uh, communications um, broke down when it uh, came down too close to the ground and um, out of sight of most of the stations you see this little bar fills up when uh, the balloon gets to altitude and you see here this is uh, the maximum altitude reaches 35,824 meters this is actually the second highest uh, balloon flight in the UK um, it, um, the highest b b uh, flight is about uh, 36.2 kilometers but um, is I think in my opinion this is really enormous altitude um, especially when you keep in mind that the flight was planned to uh, burst at about 33 kilometers so um, that it got about uh, 2.8 kilometers higher is um, quite impressive if you scroll down you see this little graph which is time versus altitude and this one is called a Fuji mountain graph because you see the ascent is with a constant velocity because the line is straight and um, the descent when it comes down on a parachute the air the, uh, density of air is uh, very low at the highest altitude so the braking effect of the parachute is very small it uh, gets very fast and um, when it comes down um, the density increases exponentially and so the velocity goes down um, exponentially also that it um, touches down with about 4 meters per second but here it was actually about 60 meters per second uh, which is 200 kilometers per hour that is really fast what is uh, um, uh, maybe um, interesting to notice the curve bends a little here so it had about 3.3 uh, meters per second ascent rate and here it's 2, 1.8, 1.5, 1 1.1 before bursting uh, and this is uh, said to be a super pressure effect that the balloon um, reaches its maximum elastici elasticity it can't stretch out more and then it uh, pressure builds up builds up inside it a super pressure is um, the amount of pressure in the balloon over the outside pressure and um, the um, pressure in the balloon builds up and strains it uh, until it bursts and this um, causes the ascent rate to uh, collapse uh, down which you, and this is uh, really nice to see on this ascent and um, if you s in the end I want to show you where the landing was in a satellite mode um, recently many flights ended up in in the woods and trees but this time the um, balloon this was the latest record this was the prediction so you see this was a nice landing in the field and uh, it the balloon already has been recovered so this concludes this little tour of the spacenear.us website where my flights will also be um, can be seen then when my balloon is in the air